I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hey, everybody. This is Patrick with Egomaniac Wednesdays. I hope everybody is having a good week so far. And hopefully last week, John and I, when we get together, we get excited and um, it really enjoy talking to each other. So I know we were a little all across the board last week, but hopefully you guys got some takeaways from that. This week, our topic is growth. I know Bill is going into into this week with his shows talking about the growth purpose. I was thinking about it because he's going that direction. I'm going to veer, veer off that path a little bit and go into a topic that, that I think a lot about, which is growth as a parent. So how do you work at being the best parent you can be? That is something I think about on a daily basis. I know I've said this multiple times. You know, Bill's thought that he passed along to me years ago about the, the thing we're leaving behind, the legacy we're leaving behind is our kids and that mentality sticks with me on a like i said on a daily basis i look at my toughest job my most rewarding job the thing that i have the most fun with but also is the most challenging all of these different aspects are part of being a parent. And there's a cliche saying that I that you hear a lot about how there's not a book on how to be a good parent. There's a lot of parenting books, but as we as parents go through this process, you realize that uh, the books that I've read, they're okay, but don't address a lot of the key factors, especially when it comes to each, each individual kid. I feel like parenting along with sales or diet or workouts, all of these things the self-help books generalize everything from my experiences, meaning they more put it out there as a one-size-fits-all. And, and we all know from a diet standpoint, I mean, we, we discuss that at, at length in Stress Mastery. Bill discusses this, that the diet industry is a billion-dollar business for one reason and one reason only, it's based on failure. What do you get out of that? Well, not everyone can do the same diet and have the same results. My diet, Bill's diet, David's diet, my wife Christine's diet, like we're all going to have a different diet. Therefore, if you're going into a generalized diet, not specific to you, right? You're going to fail. And from a parenting standpoint, again, to go back, my growth as a parent really started when I understood each one of my kids' purposes. Because myself, like I'm sure many of you guys, you're as a young parent, the way I started parenting in a, 
in large part mirrored how my parents parent parented me and my brother, my past programs, right? So that's the way I started parenting my kids is a lot of things that my parents did with me. Again, very general, um, kind of the same mentality with each kid. I was taking that approach. Um, I will say I didn't know exactly where I was missing the mark, but I knew that I was missing the mark. Uh, and I started trying to figure out how do I do this at a higher level? How do I become better at this what I consider my most important job in my life. Along, right around that time period is when I met Bill and started working with Bill and he became a client of his. And as parenting started coming up more and more in our calls, he asked me a question. Well, what do you think each one of your kids' purposes. What 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 do you think your each kid? What do you think their purpose is? And so, as we started digging into that question, we started discovering and basically went through a discovery process of each one of my kids' purposes. And I'll give you what we came up with. So with my oldest son, he's 16. His purpose is the same as my purpose, freedom purpose. All right. So my 14-year-old, his purpose is love purpose. And then with my um, newly, as of a couple of weeks, uh, 12-year-old little girl, her purpose is vitality. And so let's dig into each one of those. Freedom purpose, know that well, that is me. So I've got a condensed version of each one of these for the sake of time. So freedom purpose, I've got down here, aim to expand all possibilities. Pendulum swing is the need to control. So down into the desire energy, 125, two, level 30 energy guilt. In most cases, the individual gets stuck in the desire energy for a considerable amount of time before experiencing the significant drop to guilt. Okay, so our Achilles heel as a freedom purpose is the need and want to control. All right, so that is myself, which also leads, that's my oldest son. All right, my 14-year-old, love purpose, aim to expand unconditional love. Pendulum swing is indifference into anger or down to grief or both. Usually settling in number 30 energy guilt. Okay, and then vitality purpose, which is my daughter, 12 years old, which is also my wife's purpose. Aim to expand energy, pendulum swing from stagnation, which is 125 desire energy, either up to 175 pride energy or down to 30 energy guilt. Okay, so oldest son, freedom. My youngest son, middle kid, love. And then my youngest a uh, daughter, uh, youngest kid, is vitality. And when I when we defined each of these, and I started thinking back of when I connected with my oldest son, and then when we had a disconnect, which was a good bit, I started thinking about why. Why is that? Um, did the same process and went through the same thought process with my youngest son, the 14-year-old. 
kind of went back to specific times and places and what was said that put him in the red zone and me in the red zone. And then same with my daughter. I say all of this just to say, when I understood the difference between the kids and their purposes and the energies and and all that goes along with that, my job as a parent became much easier. If you think about it, there's a smart and dumb way to do everything. And the longer I live, the more I figure out the dumb way to do most everything in general, 30,000 foot view is to treat everything the same, meaning no matter what, you're going to treat employees a certain way, or no matter what, I'm going to parent a certain way. You know, to take a general approach to anything without considering circumstances, uh, individuals, uh, multiple X factors that are going along with that specific occurrence or what whatever is going on in your life to look at it the same way each time, right? That is, and again, very guilty of this on many occasions, that's the, the not, I hate, don't use the word dumb. I'll say very inefficient, not so smart way to look at it. The smart way to look at it is considering all the factors, taking everything in consideration. And that's when Bill talks about slowing down and how that's a superpower and how your ego tries to speed you up. And it's a skill to be able to slow yourself down. Well, to me, that's what that means is, is when things are happening and say, for example, from a parenting standpoint, you've, you've got, and I'll use my oldest son. He's a, he's like almost too perfect of an example. When he pushes back on myself or his mom or both of us, you can feel yourself trying to speed up. You can feel your ego trying to get involved. And your ego wants you to defend an attack because they are pushing you and they know the buttons to push. He knows the buttons to push. Remember, he is me, right? For both freedom purposes, which is why I have to work the hardest with him because I've explained, actually explained this to him. When I see him and hear him do certain things, I told him the reason I get most frustrated with him, he sees a frustration uh, come to me quickly is because really I'm more so frustrated at 16 year old Patrick. I know that I did the same thing when I was his age. I can see myself doing and saying the exact same thing. So I told him, I said, you have, have to forgive me on occasion for letting that frustration not come out, right? I, I, I do control it, but when he looks at my face and I look frustrated, I explain that's more me seeing me. Right. I I do understand that. But when you see yourself that long ago, kind of like in living color, right, right there in front of me, there he is. And and you see yourself doing and saying things that, you know, can be damaging or whatever it is, you know, the negative um the, neg the negativity that some of these things bring to situations and others and us as it, his parents. Yes, it is frustrating. So when I see, when I see those things, I have had, you know, see and hear them. 
I have to work very, very hard to keep the ego out and to slow down and to understand from a purpose standpoint, okay, and from a development standpoint, okay, why is he doing what he's doing? Why is he saying what he's saying? And that takes a ton of restraint. My ego with him in particular is the loudest. Again, we are the same purpose and almost identical probably values. So he's the most difficult for that reason. He's an amazing, awesome kid, but I have to work the hardest to parent him. Okay. Now I am rarely triggered by my 14 year old, also a boy to the point to where I've actually been able to coach him in basketball very effectively. Okay. Why? Well, I know he's a love purpose. He has very different, a very different purpose from me, and but I have love as a value. So very few things that he does or says, now again, he's 14, this may change when he's 16, but I don't think it will. Very few things that he, his actions or things that he says triggers me. Okay, and it, and when you dig into, I challenge you to look at these different purposes. And if you want to use my examples, dig into them, get into the community, and look really hard at that love purpose. Okay, he is constantly wanting to make sure, no matter if even if he says or does something, he quickly flips it around because. His nature, his purpose and values match up with making sure that he is in good standing, right? He wants to feel that unconditional love. Now, obviously, we will we give them unconditional love no matter what, which is what unconditional love means. But think about it from his purpose and value standpoint, he quickly realizes maybe what he did and what was said and realizes that that didn't make me feel, you know, it wasn't a, a happy experience for me. It wasn't something that I was happy with. Um, I didn't maybe, maybe I don't get upset with him. Maybe I say something that brings clarity to what he said but he quickly realizes that and we're able to address it. And he flushes it, I flush it, and we move on. All right. So I don't have to work very hard. What now that I know Jesse and Jesse's purpose as love. Now, where we do have to work hard to remind ourselves is the love purpose. Jesse is. I would say from a focus standpoint regarding maybe some school stuff, um, we'll be on the way to baseball and he will actually have forgotten his glove. You know, like little things like that to where his mind is very flighty and he moves and 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 does things in a way that he does flush easily, which is a, an amazing trait, but he also doesn't transfer of, okay, baseball practice, got to make sure glove and, and bat, right? Cleats, bat bag, right? He quickly gets redirected in, oh, let me go make my snack. Let me go get my water. And then the glove and bat fall off the map. OK, so little things like that, that used to we used to make comments like, Jesse, this is ridiculous. How could you possibly do this? You know, you're going to baseball practice. You know, this, that. The, how could you do this? Almost like he's doing it to us. Right. We took it personal 
and that there was a flaw with him. Once I discovered his purpose and, and looked at it, and again, challenge you to look at it, I realized that this is just who he is. This is how his brain operates. And there's no nothing personal about it. That's just who he is. We have to help him work on that piece of the puzzle harder than we do some others, right? Of focus and reminding him and, hey, make sure to get your bag done night before. Things to that nature that that's our job as a, as a parent. And now that we know, once we figured out his values and purpose and all the things that come with it of who he is, who Jesse is, that helped us understand and do a better job, right? That is our growth process as parents. You have to work at it. Just like everything else, you have to figure out how do I do this and be the best parent? How does Patrick be the best parent he can be? How does Christine, my wife, how do we work together to do to do this job, right? And what I consider my most important job. And then with my daughter, vitality purpose, really big on what I would consider feeling the room, energy level. She is going to know that you're off or that your mind is elsewhere quickly. She's going to ask, hey, is everything okay? And she does that because she feels the energy. She can feel when you are maybe down or maybe when your mind is, say, on something that happened at work or whatever it may be, she is very quick to feel that energy. So with her, you, you always have to remember that and understand that. And, and right. It's a great lesson for all of us, right? When you're around someone like that, you've got to keep that energy high. You've got to keep that energy up. And if there's something on your mind or you want to communicate with, with whomever it is, right, go ahead and get that done because she is feeding off of that energy. Now, you know, when when she swings, right, it has here, right, we've got stagnation, okay, and then a guilt. So I'll give you an example of the last few weeks. So the boys are in high school now, both boys are in high school, and they started school two weeks before she did. And so over the last couple of weeks, she's been home a lot without the boys and, you know, because the boys are in school and Christine and I are, you know, I'm, I'm working and Christine's doing her, her stuff and working out and doing all, getting all of her errands run. A lot of times either Tessa was with Christine doing her, her stuff, maybe not exactly what she would want to be doing, you know, but along for the ride and enjoying being with mom. Um, but a lot of just kind of, driving around, getting things done, or she was at home, uh, not not a lot of times by herself, but just at home doing her own thing. And you could see just that lack of interaction with others, um, but also really more, so, well, I'll say more so lack of interaction with her friends because they, they had all also gone to school early. Um, you could see her kind of get in stagnation. You could see her being a little disconnected and a little down, right? Her energy level was down, um, which she's got a little anxiety. Uh, she'll just kind of have a feeling of anxiety. It comes over her, things that we're working through with her, and it's not a huge deal, but it's something she deals with. And in turn, over the last few weeks, she actually had a few of those I would call it episodes, but, you know, she felt that more than she normally does. Um, and again, I feel that once you kind of look back, it was that disconnection 
um, from from others and just kind of really, I think, wanting to be in school, wanting to be with their friends, wanting to have that interaction, right? So, you know, and she also loves, loves, loves horses. And if you talk to anybody that knows horses, and I've learned, gotten to know a lot about them just through her, you know, horses are all about energy. They are also feeling that energy, reading you. Um, she and the horses get along very well because they have that in common. So she she loves that and was naturally drawn to that at five years old. So those are my three kids. And that is the process of growth that I've been through with them. And, and yes, to get back to the cliche, there there's not a book that digs into these things. But I feel like stress mastery is an amazing answer to how to grow as a parent. And Bill and I have actually discussed at length on multiple occasions, once we get stress mastery moving and launched and get it to where we want it here, you know, in the next year, once we get that done, I would love to and will write a book, not to say I'm the best parent, but to bring all these things out to that in that genre, right? In that parent parenting genre, because the answers are there. You just have to go search them out and realize how stress mastery can help you grow as a parent and understand homework. All right. I'm going to give you some homework. Okay. If you think about stress mastery and I have these things written down here. So if you think about what you've got, what you've got going, right. You've got your stages of development. Okay. And if you look at the ages, that impulsive mind, zero to seven, all right, study that impulsive mind, study the development and what the kid is going through from zero to seven. Understand that very well, okay? Then you've got imperial mind, you've got seven to 16, ages seven to 16, okay? And I've got here, right, that that identity is being set and is in large part set at 16. Like Bill says, the cage closes. Okay, so your programs are set. Your identity is set, okay? Then you've got socialized mind, that's 16 plus, and then self-authoring mind. And of course, you've got some above that interconnected and then enlightenment. But the, the three main ones I want you to dig into are impulsive mind, imperial mind, and socialized mind. Understand those very well and then think about your kids and think about the things they are doing and saying and how they push against you and how they're trying to develop. All right. And you will see a lot of parallels. All right. Understand the stages of development very well. And think about it from a parenting standpoint. And then figure out a way to establish and discover your kid's purpose. Once you do that and understand what they're doing through the stages of development, what they're doing naturally, right? It's not personal. It's not about you, right? They're not doing things to you. They are trying to develop their brain. They are developing things that are either how they're going to respond or react. They're reading you. They're watching you. They're saying things. They're feeling your energy. They are discovering and trying to figure out how to do things. And they are watching you read and react and do and things you say. Right? That's how they learn. 
So for example, if you're taking what they're saying personally and you're yelling at them, then you are teaching them that that's how you resolve conflict is yelling at the other, become frustrated and lose your cool and you lose your temper. You're just showing them how to do it the wrong way and they will replicate that with others. Of course, someone's going to call you, say, for example, at school and say, hey, your kid was screaming at the teacher or was screaming at some other kid and they got into a fight. And you're going to say, you know, if you're unaware, well, how could you do that? Why would you do that? Well, if you think back, most likely you have shown them an aggressive um, yelling way of conflict resolution. This is going to be a difficult thing to do for, for you as a parent to think back because that's on you. You showed them that and they replicated that at school. I mean, yeah, you got to hold them accountable. But you got to realize you showed them how to do it. All right. So think about it that way. If you say, oh, this sounds like a lot of work or whatever. I mean, this is something that we've got to We've got to have growth. We've got to get better at this. And there's ways to do that. All right. So again, homework, dig into the community, dig into those stages of development, and then dig into the purposes. All right. And I want you guys to experience the same growth that I have had and my wife and us as a team have had and as parents every day, of course, new challenges, I mean, as I've said on this program before, a lot of my coaching with Bill is revolving around my parenting with this, specifically my 16-year-old. But um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, good luck digging into this and have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much. 